Bonjour everyone, welcome to another Diecast Showcase. Uh, today we're going to be uh, looking at some Volkswagen Auto Group Diecasts, all 164, all loose, and all uh, Hot Wheels and Matchbox. So basically, um, I felt like doing a little, um, kind of like uh, an exploration of uh, most of the brands that uh, Volkswagen uh, actually owns. Um, there's uh, um, there's going to be a couple of uh, representatives missing uh, from uh, the the uh, the list of different manufacturers that are under the um, uh, Volkswagen umbrella, um, namely. Um, uh, there is not going to be any Seats or Skodas because, quite honestly, I don't have any of either companies uh, in any scale. So those two are going to be missing there, and I won't get into uh, Ducati, if uh, which, if you didn't, you guys didn't know, is a, a, a motorcycle manufacturer that is actually owned uh, by uh, the Volkswagen Auto Group. So basically, we're we're just going to be missing uh, that, and I don't have any loose Bentleys either to show you. So I do have a few in the collection, but none loose. So that's going to be a notable uh, uh, absentee as well. So we'll start off with uh, some Volkswagen, because uh, obviously, you know, it's the pretty much uh, most obvious uh, most obvious brand out of the Volkswagen group, and we're going to start with. Probably my second favorite Volkswagen casting in my collection as a whole. It's a nice little custom Beetle, early Beetle with the split uh, rear window, split oval window in the back. Uh, full patina. Um, this, I believe, was a 2018 release if we're talking about this specific variation. Um, very cool little bug. Um, Probably I'm gonna add some uh, to a couple of touches of silver for the headlights though, because that's definitely missing. Um, but this thing is really, really cool. Excuse the uh, had some fun with my daughter there with smiley faces, so you'll see those uh, sporadically throughout this video. Um, but yeah, very, very cool. I love the steelies with the uh, the white walls. You know. In uh, the opinion of uh, a lot of people, probably the best mainline wheels made by Hot Wheels, and they look good on literally everything. So, uh, so this is a closed top version with the roof rack, um, and uh, the short tail, the short twin tailpipes. Um, there are older versions, uh, including one that I have uh, with uh, metal body, metal base, open roof to see the interior, and the larger single exhaust in the back. Um, but uh, this one uh, I did not take out today because I didn't want to do any type of variations. So uh, I do have another multi-pack variation of this exact casting in, in uh, matte green. Um, and yeah, the one that I was referring to before in uh, purple with the uh, Hot Wheels, uh, Hot Wheels uh, livery on it. So but this is a very, very cool little custom beetle. Uh, definitely love the rat look. Um, and there it goes. Try and get that to stay there. All right, second up. Uh, after the Beetle basically was uh, discontinued, actually quite late, uh, especially in Mexico, where production, uh, I believe, carried on until the uh, late 90s, maybe even early 2000s for the uh, classic Beetle. Um, over here, there was a change to this guy, which is the uh, first release of the... Uh, well, technically, Golf Mark One. It could be a Rabbit Mark One GTI. Either way, this is a really cool release by Matchbox. Uh, very happy uh, when this was released. Picked it up as soon as I uh, could on the pegs. Uh, very cool as well because you have the full front, uh, front full front details here uh, with the uh, Euro Spec uh, single round lights, GTI badge, Volkswagen badge, and on the side. You do have the rabbit badging, which is specifically for the North American market. Um, unfortunately, you do see that big post in the back, on the back seat, despite the uh, slightly tinted windows. But it's a very nice casting. I did add some uh, rear light details myself. That was sorely lacking, so 
a little bit of orange for the flashers and um, some red for the lights. I didn't add any anything for the uh, reverse lights. Um, yeah, but you have the um, kind of like steel wheels, steelies with hubcaps as wheels, which is pretty appropriate. Not exactly, but pretty appropriate. These will look good with like little BBS style wheels. But uh, they're hard to find in super small diameter, so. Um, yeah, door handles are done through the side tampo work, which is quite retro. Uh, quite girthy uh, uh, rear view mirrors as well. Which I'm probably going to add a touch of silver to as well. Um, uh, rear wiper is uh, engraved into or uh, cast into the... Uh, the rear window, uh, you've got the sunroof and the uh, hood uh, hood uh, grill that's done, which is nice, which are nice touches. Um, very very nice cast. There's a few color variations that have come out of this one. I'm looking forward to finding the silver one, which I have yet to see. Part of the uh, we're a couple waves behind in Canada for Matchbox, at least in my area. Um, I've yet to find that Lexus LS400, which I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on, since I do love JDM cars. Um, that's one that I'm really looking forward to. We'll see what happens. So we'll close that uh, little racket there. Staying in the Mark I theme, getting back to this Volkswagen, these Volkswagens, um, wanted to show off uh, another casting from Hot Wheels that I really, really enjoy. Um, so this one is a little Volkswagen Mark I Caddy. This is a mystery model from uh, last year, maybe the year before. Not exactly sure. I think it's last year. Uh, so yeah, everybody knows this casting. It's really, really a nice cast with the skateboard, uh, skateboard in the back, which you can see there. Um, but yeah, really cool cast. This one has like full tempo. It's got kind of like a Zamac uh, feel to the uh, body color and whatnot there. I don't know if. Uh, Lighting's pretty good today since uh, we're midday, but I don't know if uh, this is picking up the type of finish you have, but it's really looking like Zamac. Um, got the very, uh, very lively uh, green and orange uh, tampo work all over the truck or car or backy or pickup or ute or whatever you want to call it there. And uh, two-tone chrome uh, lace wheels, same diameter, green in the chrome green in the front. Chrome orange in the back. Yeah, did add uh, two little touches of sharpie on this one as well. Really like how the Volkswagen is um, the Volkswagen is um, cast into the uh, rear uh, the rear of the vehicle as well. Looks really good. Got the fender flares, uh, riveted fender flares uh, all around. Nice cast details in the front. I do have uh, the the uh, silver variation of this, which may or may not be the first edition that has full tampo work front and back. Looks really good. Uh, cast details on this one actually do make it look very good, despite the lack of uh, front and rear tampos. Uh, you've got kind of like a sunroof on top with kind of like what looks like a roll cage that's part of the uh, tinted uh, glass portion of the cast. Um, very cool, very cool. Um, yeah, 2014, 2014, uh, license, so probably 2015 release. I think the one I have, the silver one, actually I have it right here. I'll just show it off quick, quick, because you guys let me know if this, uh, if this specific version would be the first edition, but it's literally the silver one on five spokes, the classic five spokes. As you can see, it's fully tampled front, fully tampled rear. Uh, with the little Hot Wheels flame. Same exact cast, except it's got a light blue tint window instead of black tint. Uh, you know, sports seats and whatnot. Same skateboard, same everything. I think this one would be the first edition, but I'm really not sure. You guys let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, getting back to uh, the lineup that I want to show you today. Um, we're going to move from Mark 1 to Mark 2. Um, Mark 1 to Mark 2 was definitely a, a, a move in the right direction, in, in my humble opinion, uh, since uh, we're talking about uh, crash standards coming becoming more and more, uh, more and more important, uh, and of course, uh, uh, you know, a little bit more room inside. Um, 
these used to be extremely prevalent when I was a kid. Everybody wanted, if you weren't a Civic head, you were a golf head, so it's one of the two. Um, what people were mainly looking for uh, would have been something like this. Little Mark II Golf from Hot Wheels. Um, I'm not sure if it's a GTR or not, but uh, I do have a couple variations of this. Uh, it's got the quad uh, round lights in front, which would indicate a GTI, but I mean, these things are, you know, I'll just say GTI kits on a regular Golf with any type of motor swap from a 1.8T or a VR6 or anything like that is quite prevalent. Was actually maybe 10, 12, 15 years ago. Still see uh, still see some going rolling around once in a while. Uh, nice little cast. Proportions are pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Uh, this, I believe, is a 2017 release. This specific color wave, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there was a blue and a aqua ver a version of this car as well. Color variations. Um... I'm not sure if this is based on the old cast from the 90s that uh, one of the variation was a pink, super, super glittery one. Honestly, really not sure. But uh, yeah, this is a really cool cast. And uh, there is a, it was re-released a couple times. I believe there's a Volkswagen series that just came out or is coming out soon that has it. As well as the, um, what was it? The, the Street Racers series. Um, that had a green variation, like a kind of like a lime green metallic variation. Um, I do have that one, and I do have another uh, another one of the regular version as well. But um, honestly, not sure. Uh, not sure. Uh, this casting came out when? Yeah, it must be the same one as the glittery one, because look at the uh, look at the copyright date, 1989. So this has been around for decades, literally. Um, complete opposite spectrum of the Mark II range. Something that was not imported to North America, but that I personally have seen a couple uh, in real life uh, that have been imported here. You know, Volkswagen community is huge, not upstanding where you are in the world. So, um, yeah, the Gulf Country. Very cool. Uh, this was out of a uh, Matchbox 9-pack. Um, excuse me there. I'm going to get a little beverage open. All right, um, definitely um, nice cast by Matchbox. This would have been probably the fourth color variation, if my calculations are correct. Um, really looking to uh, try and find the um, the first uh, edition one, which would have been like in the um, the most uh, common color, like kind of like an aqua that these came in uh, in a, in one for one in real life. So. I know it was just re-released in the original first edition color wave uh, as part of the Matchbox Retro series. Um, we don't, I, I have yet to, see, they're, they're more prevalent in Target and we don't have Target in Canada. So I, I'm, I have yet to see those on the, on the shelves so, or on the pegs. Um, very cool, very cool cast. I find the roll bar takes a little bit away from the cast details. But at the same time, since, since it's not really tampled front or rear and only has a little tiny bit of the uh, rear lights as part of the side tampos, which is something Matchbox does tend to do. Um, looks great on the card, right? And you think, hey, nice, fully tampoed and everything. You turn it around, not so much. But at the end of the day, it's such a unique casting. This is literally like a regular Golf 5 door that has a lifted suspension uh some a few body accessories as well uh and the synchro all-wheel drive system uh probably like an eight valve uh like a two liter or one uh, 1 1.8 liter or something like that under the hood not really sure again we never got these in north america i'm speculating but i'm pretty sure that's what it would be um but yeah really cool cast the wheels are you know, they're not bad. They're not a bad choice. They're nice wheels. I like these wheels from Matchbox, the five spokes with kind of like a little bit of concave going on. You know, they obviously look at aftermarket on this car. Uh, but yeah, oh yeah, and uh, Steelies with a gold ring. I find these would have looked really good on this um, on this cast. Maybe not with the gold ring there, but uh, you know, this thing just really wants to go. Okay, so next up, um, 
been through Mark II. I don't really have, a, I don't have any Mark III's. I did have a Mark IV and 143 scale that I sold quite a while ago. And I think I pretty much showed all my Mark V's that I have already. So I don't want to show again castings that I've already showcased. Uh, one cast that I was kind of surprised that I like so much uh, would be this last gen new Beetle from Hot Wheels. This was from a multi-pack as well. I'm not sure if it was from a 3-pack or a 10-pack. But it was from a multi-pack. Um, this is a cool car. I like the stance of this car. It looks like kind of like factory sport model. Like a turbo, a turbo model. Um, you know, fully detailed. Kind of like a... Kind of like what you would see in the Factory Fresh series. Just missing a little bit of detail on the vents on the front bumper. But, uh, you know, V-Dub logo, the round lights are there. Um, the rear is really well done with the little license plate, the Hot Wheels license plate. Um, black uh, roof to simulate the panoramic roof. It was very popular on these, on these last gen ones before the model was discontinued. And you've got a... What looks to be a gray interior. I'm assuming it matches the base as a color. Uh, with the tinted windows, it, it, it almost looks like an anthracite dark gray, their charcoal gray or something. Um, you got the little aerial and the side uh, the, the side mirrors, which is really cool. Um, and the the these uh, little OH5s uh, in uh, equal diameter or, or, uh, all the way around look really good on this car. I find they fit the car really well. Um, they give it a nice square, uh, square fitment, nice stance, very, uh, very cool. I mean, it's not a car I'd buy uh, in real life, but I mean, this variation I find looks really good. And I know that, uh, they're still prevailing in multi-packs right now. I've seen a yellow version, um, also that's, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, widespread. Um, last Volkswagen cast that I'm going to show you before we head into, uh, we head into um, uh, other uh, brands uh, that are owned by the Volkswagen Group is uh, one that I uh, got through a thrift store bag. Uh, it's definitely not in the greatest condition, but it's a really cool car. Um, it's this one here. So this is the uh, Matchbox uh, Volkswagen V12 W12 Nardo. Uh, so this is a concept car. But it's a functional concept car uh, that was uh, made by Volkswagen in the uh, mid 2000s to show off basically what they could do uh, before, and it was also a test bed for certain components that uh, went to equip um, Bentleys, namely the uh, Conti GT and the Flying Spurs, as well later on as the Bugatti uh, Veyron. So a test bed for the all-wheel drive system specifically for those vehicles is what's in here um there's a nice red interior on this one as you can see it's it's really not in the best of conditions but i mean all the tampos are there in front uh no rear tampos well actually yeah there are rear tampos but no real light tampos which is kind of weird i find um and you do have the w12 badge right there some uh red uh, exhaust detail and vent detail from the uh, uh red interior here's your base uh, so this has a 2001 copyright. So yeah, it's probably early 2000s as opposed to mid 2000s as I mentioned before. But uh, they did make a, a convertible version of this as well. And if ever, uh, like me, uh, you were a hardcore Gran Turismo uh, fan in the uh, in the uh, early to mid 2000s, uh, you probably remember this car from uh, Gran, Tur Gran Turismo 3, Gran Turismo 4. Um, don't think it was in Gran Turismo 2 because this concept wasn't even out at that time but uh, definitely in GT3 and GT4 you know this uh, actually um, you know around the the reason why it's called the W12 Nardo uh, is simply because uh, the Nardo test ring was used to test the top speed of this car if I remember correctly it went up to um, 300 it, it, it held actually an average of over 340 kilometers an hour uh, for the longest time in the Guinness Book of uh, World Records, basically. I'd have to look up the exact numbers. Feel free to do so, but it's an interesting record. Uh, this was basically uh, to test the reliability of such a supercar and a potential potential inclusion uh, in like a 24-hour endurance race like Le Mans or Daytona or something like that. Um, we 
which I don't think ever happened, honestly. But uh, nevertheless, very cool uh, little uh, tidbit of history of this car. All right, next up, um, we're going to uh, move to Audi. Uh, Audi. So Audi is um, definitely a brand that uh, has products I do enjoy. Um, especially the uh, especially the fact that they make all those fast wagons basically um, now um, the uh, the first one I'm going to show you it's not really a wagon it, it is fast though is this uh, nice little mm, let's focus on it there Audi RS5 coupe this I believe is a post facelift model I'm not mistaken. Uh, you guys can let me know if if, if this is pre facelift or post facelift, but it's fully detailed. Again, factory fresh. Again, out of a multi pack for me. I know that this was was sold a uh, single carded and everything, but I like these cars that are very realistic by Hot Wheels. Um, you know, you got the license plate, not a real license plate, but still a license plate tampo, lights badging front and rear. Um, you know, the grill's very well made. It's actually textured, as you can see, to get that uh, honeycomb look. Really nice, nicely done car. It looks good in black. Again, those OH5s in a smaller diameter. Just uh, the, the comment that I had for the new Beetle that, that you see just, uh, just below here, it applies for this one as well. Very, very cool. Very cool. Square fitment. Fills up the wheel arches nicely, you know, looks looks really, and I love the concave look when you put it uh, like a front uh, three-quarter view. Uh, you know, you don't see the spokes that are closest to the camera right now, you know, since it since the wheels are so concave. It really gives uh, an aggressive kind of stance to this car, which I really enjoy. RS5 is not my favorite, uh, favorite modern Audi there, but I mean, it's obviously very cool. Um... But Audis, to me, the ones that I really, really like for Audis, 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 you know, question of pronunciation, I guess. But uh, yeah, the Audis that I really like are in this fashion, basically. The uh, fast wagons or the Avant, uh, the Avant line uh, that Audi has, especially in the S and RS variants. I mean, this is a... Uh, c5 rs6 so uh basically based on the uh audi a6 that came out in 1998 well 19 late 19 1997 as a 98 model to, to replace the venerable audi um audi 200 and uh audi 100 range um this uh, was also, I believe, the first application of the twin turbocharged 4.2 liter V8. Um, again, it's a matchbox. Uh, you've got the uh, the uh, twin 10 spokes on this one. Again, the tampo work, impeccable, impeccable. And as you can see, basically, it's got uh, the full details, but the license plate's much more realistic. Um, Focus on that there. See A U N V. So I guess Audi N V. Uh really nice cast. You know, you got a nice, nice shade of blue. It's not really representative of a blue audio uh, Audi would have offered on these models, but you know, you got the sunroof, nicely, uh nicely done seats. Let's not talk about the steering wheel, but I mean it's no biggie for a dollar. Uh, this is an older variation, basically. I know that this has been re-released with the six spokes, uh, which is a set, a set of wheels that I find looks very generic and cheap, um, and that they do put on a lot of models. These ten spokes I find fit better, uh, and uh, they're a nice change from the five spokes that are very widespread as well, despite them being cool wheels. I do like these ten spokes a lot, so uh, I find they give a little a little bit of a VIP look. Um, yeah, these are. This is a really nice cast. Um, they did uh, fumble up and re they did re-release this cast as a RS2 in white. Um, RS2 card work, but it's absolutely not an RS2. It is an RS6 again. There was uh, I never picked that one up because I, I was thoroughly insulted since my favorite wagon in the world is the Audi RS2. 
Um, I was super excited uh, when uh, I saw the card and when I looked at the car in the in the bubble, clearly saw it was the exact same thing that I, I had already had this since uh, probably had this one for five years. So uh, thanks, uh, by the way, Hot Wheels for uh, releasing the uh, RS2. Uh, I do have both variants uh, that are out as of today. Looking forward for that black metallic one, hopefully the super version. All right, next up we have probably my favorite non-wagon Audi of all time, the Audi Quattro Sports. We, I did show you a premium version of this uh, in a previous video where we looked at some Hot Wheels premium uh, motorsport themed uh, uh, cars on card. Well, this is the mainline version of uh, the one from uh, the Thrill Climbers. Uh, one of the variations. This, I believe, was the third variation, if I'm not mistaken. First one being red, which has a super equivalent have that on short card as well as an exact variation of this one but in white with the same tempo work which i do have on long card this is one that uh i decided to crack open i love the dark green on this which was actually one of the uh very few colors available on the uh audi quattro sport um you had red obviously and blue uh sorry red and white uh this green and i believe black as well was offered that's pretty much it uh, these were extremely expensive at the time. An Audi Quattro Sport was more expensive than a, a 930 Turbo of the same era. So just to give you an idea. But I mean, we're talking about 300 plus horsepower, shortened wheelbase, Quattro all-wheel drive, five-cylinder turbo. Um, it's it literally homologation special for Group B. So this thing is a beast in real life. And the sound of the turbo five-cylinder in these Audis from this specific version all the way up to basically the RS2s and the S6s uh, uh, and whatnot, basically. They're all phenomenal, phenomenal uh, sounding engines with so much power potential. However, they do get greedy if we're talking about uh, maintenance. Quick note, very cool that there's three tampo passes on this one. Sides plus the front. Uh, unfortunately, nothing in the rear, but... It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world at all. Very cool, basically. You know, you got the uh, the little rally. Uh, what is the what is this terrain challenge? You know, I would have liked seeing Monte Carlo or something like that. But uh, yeah, Audi Sport Dima Dima. I don't know what I, what that is. I know the Dima with two M's actually is a company that made wide body kits for uh, Peugeot's. Uh, uh, in the uh, mid to late 90s, uh, namely uh, uh, the Peugeot, uh, oh, even before that, uh, Peugeot 306 uh, Maxi that ran in the Group A actually had a DEMA body kit, so, um, yeah. All right, so Audis, don't have a whole lot. We're actually going to skip uh, to, uh, you know, probably the most loved brand that's owned by the Volkswagen Group, if we're talking about popularity. Maybe not by everyone, but um, I'm going to jump into Porsche. Porsche. I'm a big Porsche fan, as many of you guys are. Um, I know Honest Diecast is a Porsche, fanat Porsche fanatic. Uh, I know that uh, Mustang Hunter likes his Porsches too. Uh, you know, uh, Liver Diecast has definitely affinity for Porsches as well. I mean, I know that a lot of, uh, you know, Mad Visions, you know, all, the, all you guys, you know, you love your Porsches. I'm the same way. Um... So let's check out a few of them. First one's going to be a Matchbox. It's a 914. Tons of variations of this uh, have been uh, have been uh, released. Um, I think that body color wise, this is probably my favorite one. Silver with the black accents. Uh, the Porsche stripe on the side looks really legit. It's six spokes. Not so sure though. Not so sure. It's not the best. Uh, not the best. Not the best choice of wheels. This is one of two uh, that I have uh, of these exactly in this configuration. The other one being a color variation. Uh, all the silver on the car is white and all the black on the car is red on that other variation with red six spokes like this. I mean, I'd like to get the six spokes off the car to do a wheel swap to something more appropriate and then use those six spokes on something else because they are really cool wheels 
Again, you got that concave look and everything. Um, they're cool mainline wheels, but, you know, on a classic car like this, not so sure. like also the fact that uh, one uh, rear view mirror only, which is something that uh, was, you know, a uh, feature on the one for one car as well. Uh, cool tidbit, the uh, top of this car is plastic. It's actually all part of the... Uh, all part of the the plastic glass portion so full roof just kind of like matted out for the uh the b pillars and the uh and the top and then translucent for the rear window and uh the windscreen so again those side tampos eh? you think you're gonna have lights but you don't so yeah but nevertheless a very cool cast last release i believe was in red with the uh, steelies uh, kind of like the ones that we see on this golf, uh, on, on the little golf mark one here. Uh, but in, uh, chrome, uh, as they normally come, looks much better, much better with those wheels on there. So I do have that one carded. Uh, so next up, but uh, we're going to be looking at, I think this is a 2019 release, if I'm not mistaken, 2020 on the pegs. I was really happy when this came out. Um especially when this specific color variation came out uh the porsche 944 by ryu slash mattel slash hot wheels um you know uh we we all know about the stethoscope uh, under the uh hatch uh the hatch glass uh which is a uh, kind of like a wink to uh his uh oncologist that um that was taking care of him uh, had one of these so this is basically the spec supposedly that he had really nice gold champagne color nice finish uh full tampos again uh has like the uh, rear spats that uh, would indicate this is a turbo and it has a turbo badge on the back which confirms it's a turbo um very very cool uh with the um uh, black pr5s with the chrome uh chrome lip nice little porsche logo on the front pop-up lights which is an automatic win rear view mirrors the big big sunroof as with the real car these had a huge sunroof that was removable so that's pretty cool very cramped interior and the dashes did have tendency to crack and the parts on these despite these uh cars being you could pick these up for a couple grand uh maybe 10 years ago they've shot up in price like anything else but uh they're, the parts are very expensive. So if you pick one up cheap, thinking, hey, I'm going to, you know, work on this and fix it up, you might end up putting several times what you paid for the car as, a, as an investment into getting it uh, into a great shape. Mind you, though, I say investment, you know, legitimately, because these are really, really going up in value, especially the Turbo and Turbo S models. Very sought after. Uh, casting from the same year. Uh, or maybe a year before yeah a year before I think another one that I was super happy to see again thank you Mattel thank you Hot Wheels for making my favorite generation of 911 um, yeah the 993 the last of the air cooled and the nice white with a tan interior tampos in the front tampos in the back Carrera badge on that uh, rear uh Rear uh, hood, um, black, uh, dark gray PR5s, impeccable cast details, which makes it extremely easy to. I've started. Uh, I've started actually detailing uh, the yellow variation of this on mesh wheels. Um, I've kind of. You, you can see that the uh, tampo work on the rear light bar is. A little tiny bit iffy if we're talking about its coverage versus the real car so I've actually I'm, I'm actually touching that up uh, and uh, I'm going to attack the uh, front um, the front fog lights and uh, and indicators next as well as the grill on the yellow one this one I'm gonna leave just stock basically just as is uh, it's the first release of this casting so I prefer leaving it as is um, then we're gonna graduate going uh, up in the 911 hierarchy we're going to check out this 997 matchbox multi-pack exclusive color uh, 911 GT3 
Um, Tampos front and back again. License plate, GT3 badge. Uh, oh, there you go. thought that may have been a chip, but it was actually just a little piece of dust. Yeah. Yeah, these are on display, so uh, obviously uh, there's a little bit of dust on there. That's what happens when you have furry friends and a young child in your household. These, you know, pick up more dust and more fur and more and more things like that. So, but look at that color though, that gloss, that gloss purple. Like this is a, you know, nice Barney, the Barney purple, literally. Really like the, really like this casting. Looks really good. I think personally, this is Matchbox best Porsche cast. Um, me, you know, I, I maybe, maybe the nine, their new 918 Spider cast could be better, but I don't have that one yet. It's in the same case as that Lexus I was referring to. I've yet to find those. Or maybe do I have it? I, maybe I do have it. I'm not sure either. I'd have to check. I'd have to go through my main lines. I'm going to be doing probably a main line episode, uh, just going through a bunch of main lines that, uh, that I have. Uh, go by a type of car that I really enjoy or by manufacturer or something of the sort. Um, but yeah, I really like that that Matchbox cast and going a slight rung up in the, uh, again, the same, uh, the, the, the Porsche, the Porsche hierarchy. We've got the GT2 variation by Hot Wheels, a uh, variant by Hot Wheels, which does include uh, lensed head, headlamps, which are part of the glass portion. Porsche logo done very well some uh, big go fast stripe on the top and on the front you got some uh, J5's uh, with uh, the chrome uh, the chrome lip um, they almost seem like they're they're staggered in width but uh, they're not actually as you can see the rear um, the rear axle is way wider than the front one, but that's a great illusion to you know having those uh, that that really staggered uh, staggered look to the car. It's a really good job by Hot Wheels. This is a nice cast. There's so many variations of this cast, and uh, most of the last ones in the last uh, three, four, five years, they've all been three packs and twenty packs and ten packs and whatnot. There, uh, they've been pretty prevalent in those. So uh, this is one that I really do like. Um, do think I like the GT3 better, but then again, those 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 headlamps basically, I find kind of I find kind of cool. But yeah, either way, I mean, really cool blue as well. Almost like uh, maybe Riviera blue or something something of the sort. Not sure. Uh, Miami blue. Um, now we're gonna check out a couple more Porsches by Hot Wheels, but we're going to stray away from. The 911, you know, their main their main model, basically, that everybody knows the iconic shape. We're going to go move to something quite different. Namely, this uh, 2018 release, I believe 2018 release. Cast, seemingly, was released in 2013. This variation with the Polizei uh, livery uh, was a 2018 release. Um, I actually ended up with two or three of these, basically. Uh, that I thought of keeping for, you know, having a little fleet of these and probably, you know, photography, diorama, things like that. But I ended up getting rid of the other ones. Uh, one carded one and another loose one. Um, kept this one because it's the only Panamera, the regular Panamera cast that I have. Uh, other Panameras that I do have from Hot Wheels, at least, are all the uh, Sport Turismo, the kind of like the wagon version, basically. Uh, and they're non-liveried, so... Uh, I do have a couple matchbox versions of the Panamera, at least one, maybe two, one being in a five pack, so, in yellow. Um, but yeah, Polizei, livery across the board. There's no uh, light bar or anything like that. Uh, you do have the red windows, red interior, uh, is it a red interior? Yeah, it is actually, uh, no, it's actually a gray interior very hard to see because it, it really looks red but it uh, it is actually a uh, gray um i don't personally like the aesthetics of the of the panamera but i love the wheels on this thing you know police cars are something i do tend to collect and uh this one's a cool addition you know 
uh, part of the part of the police fleet. And last Porsche we're gonna check out before we get into the uh, exotics. You know, leave the sports car re realm and go into exotics. Is this multi pack exclusive Cayman? Uh, I do have a couple, uh, another very. I have the first edition of this in the Arctic Silver. Um, now this is a nice cast. I do find that um, Matchbox does it better because once in a while you get one of these casts from Hot Wheels where the fitment is really off, and this is one of them, unfortunately, where the front end and the rear end have equal length axles. But since the rear of this car is so much wider than the front, as you can see, the wheels look kind of like Mexi poke on the front, like basically, you know, poking out of the rear arches, whereas they look kind of sunken in, in the back. And both of them have the same issue. If you look from the top, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, so not... Uh, not the best fitment, but I love the burnt orange. Very metallic. Front tampos are well done. Fortunately, instead of having rear tampos, you have those side tampos. Oh, I want this focus now. There you go. Uh, gray 10 spokes. And uh, yeah, as mentioned, no rear tampos on this one. So it's a Cayman S. So the more pow powerful, larger displacement model. Gray interior. Good looking car though. Just, you know. There's slight flaws in the actual cast itself. If we're talking about how it's, uh, how it's, uh, you know, assembled and whatnot. Um, all right. So next, 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 we're going to be looking at, as mentioned, going to go into the exotics. So first exotic brand, in the Volkswagen Group. Besides the Bentley, that uh, as I as, as advised, I won't be showing any today. I'm going to go to Lamborghini. Lamborghini, which is actually, uh, which, which was originally owned actually by Audi, uh, as opposed to Volkswagen. If we're talking about working on the working on development and the bettering of the cars, first uh, effort being the um, um, 2000 version of the Di 2001 maybe version of the Diablo, the 6.0 VT. So with the uh, displacement increase. Um, the uh, restyle, fixed the front lights, uh, you know, just modernized interior as well. Uh, the interior was where Audi really wanted to work on it because the ergonomy for uh, the Diablo up to 98 uh, was simply horrendous, maybe 99. So, um, yeah, they, thanks to Audi uh, taking, uh, taking uh, control of uh, development of... Um, Lamborghini vehicles uh, to a certain extent. Well, we uh, ended up getting the probably the best-selling Lamborghini, the the Lamborghini that 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 saved the company from another bankruptcy. Um, nice little Gallardo, Gallardo V10, all-wheel drive. Um, you know, basically uh, developed uh, in conjunction with the Audi R8. But without a V8 version, this one I believe is a uh, what is this one a uh, LP 560-4. I don't really use a dash four thing when I talk about these cars. I just say LP 564 normally. Uh, I understand the dash four though. If uh, you're kind of like I don't know, doing the uh, the voice assistant to uh, type your text or whatnot. If you say 564 obviously you just type in 564 560-4 would uh would write it out uh correctly but uh yeah so lp which stands for uh longitudinal posterior posteriore uh so longitudinal engine uh rear uh, rear placement um you know the dash 4 is basically for all wheel uh, for four wheel drive but that we all know. Oh, by the way, this thing is fully tampoed as well. Eh? Another multi-pack exclusive. A lot of my loose cars from multi come from multi-packs. I don't shy away when the full multi-pack uh, bar uh, two or three cars on a ten-pack or buy one bar one car on the on a three-pack. I'll I'll pick it up. Five packs normally. I I, I want the, the the five the five cars to be nice because I tend most of the time to keep them carded. I'll go with one car that's off and I'll still keep it uh, still still keep it boxed. 
but um, as you saw in my previous video where I showed you uh, during the Mopar showcase where I showed you uh, last five pack, five pack I bought uh, the speed blur uh, the most recent speed speed blur one I mean there's three out of five cars that uh, I liked so I cracked that one open right away um, so uh, the replacement of the Gallardo is the Huracan this is probably my favorite variation of the Huracan so far. It's got a, the same uh, shade of blue as the uh, GT2 that we checked out before. Um, uh, this one has the front tampos and again the stripes. Same thing uh, as uh, the Cayman we checked before. It's lacking the rear rear uh, details. So I did uh, add them myself on this one. You know, very subtly though. I didn't want to. I didn't want to overpower. Uh, but just just a little dab just a little dab just to say you know and uh you know turned out pretty okay i think um but yeah it's a nice shade of smurf blue baby blue you know whatever blue nice shade of blue uh and i find it's a really nice uh really nice little evolution of the model by the way i think the gallardo probably the first car that actually i love with the trap vibes but uh, you know, evolutionary, but it's 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 in the right direction. It looks more aggressive, even more compact, um, more triangles and less squares in the lines as well. So a nice uh, evolution. But you can clearly see the lineage base. And I love also the uh, the uh, inspiration taken from the Reventon for the uh, glass uh, engine cover. So very cool, uh, very cool Lamborghinis. Uh, these are surprisingly small as well, eh? Um, if ever you've ever driven one of these or sat in one. Um, I've personally never tried out a uh, Huracan, but I have tried out a uh, Gallardo on track. A uh, yellow Superleggera. Uh, that was that was fun times. Um, they're super, super small, super tight inside. Um, not something that's uh, it's easy to uh, to get used to. Um, jumping up in the uh, Lamborghini range, um, show off this uh, multi-pack exclusive from uh, last year, the uh, Aventador, the Aventador J, which I believe was produced in very limited numbers and was first and foremost uh, style study. Um, so uh, yeah, kind of like a Barchetta version of the Aventador. Very cool though. I mean, you've got the stripe on the front with the tampos. Good thing about these, it's easy to include the tampos and the stripe and the logo since uh, they're going to be a top tampo as opposed to having to do a front one uh, since the, the frontal area of these cars is extremely limited. So black interior, really nice color. Really, really nice color. Actually, the, the multi-pack exclusive for Hot Wheels 10-packs not too long ago was a yellow version of these. But I do know that uh, there's a white version that I do have also in the... Uh, Lamborghini 5-pack from uh, last year. You do have the rear tampos as well, which I really appreciate when Hot Wheels does, even when it's plastic. Uh, they tend to not tampo plastic parts of, uh, of cars, and when they do, I mean, big win. Big PR, staggered PR5s and chrome, um, as opposed to the uh, same, uh, same diameter ones that you see on the... Um, on the Huracan behind it. And the last car I'm gonna show off today needs no introduction. Oh boy, there you go, fender bender in the parking lot. That's not too good. So yeah, uh, needs no introduction. Um, it's finally, it's finally it was, was released in premium and in mainline and is currently one of the uh, three cars in the uh, hypercar uh, box set that Hot Wheels just put out. Um, Good old Bugatti Chiron. Um, I do have this one in the five pack, Exotics five pack. And I have it from the Hot Wheels Exotics premium set uh, as well. Um, but I'm surprised I don't have any Veyrons, I think. I do not have any Veyrons. So, yeah. Um, I do have a couple EB110s, but uh, they're not cracked open yet. Um, we didn't get the silver variation, basically. Seeing if uh, I'm going to crack, probably crack the yellow one open. Because the blue one is definitely my favorite. 
And uh, the dark blue version of this, basically, I was not able to acquire. This is actually from a multi-pack. So, yeah, no, uh, again, multi-pack. But I love the fact that you've got that chrome or silver line. It really adds character and dynamism to the side profile of this car. Uh, this is one of the few cars as well that uh, would not have looked right with non-staggered wheels. I find that the staggered diameter wheels work perfectly on this with the Y5s and chrome. No rear details per se. But, I mean, on a black car like this, I mean, it's kind of murdered out. Could have used some front uh, front light details, honestly. That I, I would have enjoyed because the grill is well done with the Bugatti logo that's very appropriately sized, scaled down. And that uh, continuation of that silver band that uh, goes across the front bumper. Very nice, but I don't know. There's some lackings here, and I can know uh, you can probably notice as well that uh, tampo here is slightly misapplied for the other side, but that's okay. It's okay. It looks great from this side. So, so this is the last car I'm going to show you today. So uh, we've been around the uh, Volkswagen Group and uh, zoning from the, uh, you know very uh basic to the very exotic pretty much everything in between we're just missing the luxury brands and that's it but uh yeah we'll uh finish it on that and um hopefully you enjoyed if you did uh always appreciate the thumbs up uh if, if you did like it if uh you want to be notified of future uploads feel free to uh, subscribe so as to be notified of uh, when i do upload um and um of course uh, feel free to comment your feedback below um uh, thank you for uh anybody that's a return viewer welcome to uh new viewers and uh to all of you i wish you an excellent rest of your night or day or evening or afternoon and i will catch you on the next one take care bye bye